Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Today the Faith Builder. I hope you are well this morning. Thanks for tuning in. As I said, this week we're going to be looking at the seven different kinds of suffering we can find in the Scripture. It's important for us to, to understand these things so we know in the midst of suffering how to, um, by faith, walk through that suffering and uh, learn from it and grow and get out of that suffering stronger than we entered it before. So the seven things that we talked about is first, suffering as a result of sin. Ultimately, all sin, uh, all suffering, excuse me, is a result of sin. Second one is suffering as a result of the Father's discipline in our lives. Suffering as a result of injustice. Suffering as a result of demonic activity. Suffering as a result of persecution. Suffering as a result of divine judgment and suffering as a result of divine mystery. We're just going to look at each one of those this week. This morning, though, let's dive into the first one, the, re the suffering as a result of sin, because ultimately all suffering ties back to uh, to sin uh, as as being the, the, the cause of that. Sin in our lives and in the world always brings about suffering in one form or another. It is a lie to believe that our sin only affects us. At the root of sin is a pride that basically believes that we can acquire more prosperous life doing things our way rather than submitting to the will of God right, and doing it his way. Proverbs 16, 18 says that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Uh, we know that sin, uh, ultimately, it, it, the root of it, right, is is pride. We see all the way back to the beginning, Satan was the first to, to sin, and then he brought Adam and Eve into temptation, and the rest of, of the world fell into sin as a result of that. Romans 3.23 says that we all fall short of the glory of God, that we've all sinned. Romans 6.23 tells us the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of life in Jesus Christ is a forgiveness. We have forgiveness in him. In life in Jesus, it's a free and gracious gift uh, that God has come to uh, set us free, right, from the power of sin. But when we look at the world and when we enter pandemics and other things, is behind all of that is 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 sin. And, and we should there should be a big wake up call when we see suffering in the world uh, to 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 really look at ourselves and look at the human condition that we we are flawed and we need a savior. We need help, something far beyond what we can do ourselves. Uh, in, in life. And so just three quick uh, things I want to look at here that uh, are tied to this the suffering that comes as a result of sin. Um, first one is this idea of time, is when pride wells up inside our heart, is it causes us to, to utilize this gift, this gift of time uh, in a prideful way, in a, in a fleshly, in a selfish way. And that manifests itself in two primary ways. One is, uh, according to 1 John 2, 16, is we are tempted, right, the, to let the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride of life take over. It's a pursuit of the world um, with our time, and that puts us into bondage. All, all grabs for power, all pursuits of money ultimately have and bring about suffering in the world. And we could go down the list of things, but right, an unhealthy pursuit of money brings destruction. An unhealthy pursuit of power brings destruction in the world and in people's lives, personally, in a family, and on out to all nations, obviously, um, with those things. The other side of that is this idea of laziness. Is we go the other extreme on this, if we waste our time, is that laziness, just uh, procrastinating, um, not doing what we say we're going to do, uh, this this brings about suffering in people's lives more than we'd ever, ever realize. And it, it actually generationally can instill in people a, a generational spirit of poverty that can actually get on people for generations. And we have whole nations, whole groups of people who have that spirit upon them in many ways. And it needs to be broken off uh, by the promises of God. But the last one I want us to look at is that, that pride itself is found in how we view our bodies. And this is a huge issue today uh, in our culture, but boy, sadly in our church today, that uh, sexual immorality, it, there's no place, right, among the church, among God's people for this. It's something we all struggle with, but it is basically pride. It's saying that we know better what to do with our bodies than God does. And God has been very clear about his guidelines for this. But we know that sexual immorality, when we step outside God's guidelines, um, for how we are to use our bodies, 
when we step outside, there's always suffering, great suffering that comes, not only in our own life, right, but in the lives of others. All forms of sexual immorality can cause great suffering, emotional despair, relational trauma, dysfunctional family life, a devastated community, um, and, and a host of terrible sicknesses, diseases. We could go on and on of all the things that uh, result from uh, sexual immorality and stepping outside God's bounds. Uh, and ultimately, that's pride, saying that I know better, right, from my life um, than God does. And so those are just a few things for us to look at, the, this idea of, of sin being ultimately the cause of all suffering in the world, but just a few ways that they manifest in our lives. Because when we experience suffering, we need to uh, first address the sin behind that and take it to the cross. Jesus has come, right, to give us the resources, the promises, the power to lean in so that we might not just get through that, that suffering, but also be a life-giving encourager to others to lead them into a life that will start pushing back that suffering and, uh, and relieving that suffering from other people. So without the gospel, we don't have the tools we need to to set ourselves free and others free from much of this suffering in the world. Uh, the gospel is amazing what Jesus has done, what is available to us to be made right before God and set free from the things that entangle us and keep us from the abundant life that God has for us and for us to be his vessels in the world to push back suffering and to bring a real healthy sense of what a prosperous, abundant life is all about. God bless. Have an awesome day. Mm -hmm.